Reach for the speed, reach for the whistle, go where the rail may run. Reach for the words, reach for the story, follow the rainbow sun. To a shining time station, where dreams can come true, waiting there for you. Just as the sun came up, the Southern United Railroad managers held a meeting with some of the engines at the shed at South Plainsville. Are we all in any trouble? Ian asked. No, said Mr. Regan. None of you are in trouble, but we did have to talk to all of you. It took months of planning, started Mr. McCluskey, but we came up with a new express service. It will run between here at South Plainsville to the other railway station at Otisville. The engines were excited. Are we going to get to take turns pulling this special train? Kevin asked. Mr. Campbell then spoke up. No, none of you will be taking this train. Andrew was confused. But sir, how are we supposed to? The Miss S jumped in. We have ordered a new engine and some passenger carts for this special service. This made the engines even more excited. The engine will be here later tonight, but the passengers are going to be there this morning said Ray. Larry, I would like for you to go collect them from Otisville. What? said Larry. Me? Yes, you, said Ray. Now get going. Oh, yes, Ray. Thank you, Ray. And Larry puffed away happily. Larry made his way along the main line. He was happy that Ray and the manners had entrusted him with a special assignment. When he arrived at Otisville, a diesel was waiting. Hello, said Larry. Are these the new cars we meant to pick up? Yes, they are, said the diesel. Larry puffed forward to inspect them more carefully. They were a bright orange color. Wow, these new passenger cars are wonderful, Larry said. They really are, said the diesel. Now I have to get going. And with that, the diesel ran away to get turned around. And Larry also puffed away to do the same. That afternoon, Larry arrived back at South Plainsville. Mr. McCluskey, Ray, and Al, the inventory manager, were waiting. Wow, said Ray, these coaches even look better in person. Very well built design, added Al, as he wrote down the coaches' numbers in the passenger car inventory log. Now, Larry, said Mr. McCluskey, Steve will take these passenger cars away. I want you to go to the sheds and get ready to meet the new engine with the others. Yes, sir, said Larry. All the engines were happily chatting when they suddenly heard a loud horn that they had never heard before, along with oddly a puffing noise. It sounds like a steam engine, said Kevin. But to Larry, that's the horn of a diesel. Just then, the streamlined engine pulled onto the turntable. He didn't say anything. He just eyed the engine suspiciously. Larry spoke first. Hello, he said. Welcome to the Southern United Railroad. I'm Larry. I'm Kevin. I'm Danny. I'm Christian. I'm Andrew. I'm Ian. And I'm Bernard. The engine then spoke. Oh, I'm Milton. Do, can you, one of you engines, please point me in the direction of my shed? Pick a spot, said Andrew. We have plenty of room here. You've got to be kidding me. I'm not going to share a shed with such filthy engines. Well, the engines were offended. We are not filthy, Danny said. Oh, you most certainly are, said Milton. You will spoil my lovely paint, and I can't afford to have my paint messed up before my grand debut for the passengers. The engines glared. For such a magnificent looking engine, his personality definitely sucks. Well, I just have to ask, said Ian. If you're a steam engine, why do you have an air horn like a diesel? Because it's more efficient and sophisticated than your silly whistles, Milton said smugly. I'm pretty sure you two diesels can agree, Milton said looking at Andrew and Bernard, but Andrew and Bernard didn't. Even though we like our horns, Bernard replied, we think the whistle is just as good. Yes, said Andrew, we'll never put the steam engines down for their whistles. They warm people out of the way just as good as our air horns. You're all pathetic, said Milton as he got turned around the turntable. 
the streamline engine picked the furthest spot away from the other engine. If I can't have my own shit, I guess this would have to do. He then yawned and went right to sleep as if nothing had happened. The next morning, Larry and Andrew were waiting to depart with their passenger train. Milton was waiting impatiently for Steve to bring his coaches. When Steve finally arrived, instead of saying thank you, Milton said, And what time do you call this? I call it on time, says Steve. This is not on time, said Milton. You're two minutes before you're supposed to be here. I do have other things to do in the yard, said Steve. Not just shunt your coaches. Well, if you're going to be like that, you are no longer allowed to fetch my coaches. I'll have another engine do it. Steve was livid. He didn't say anything. He just went away to get some more passenger cars. Andrew and Larry were cross. That's no way to speak to Steve, said Larry. He's one of the best chunkers on this railway, Andrew added. Not in my book, snapped and built and went the way to go get coupled on. It wasn't long before Milton was speeding along the line. And ignoring the other end in the process. He soon arrived at Otisville Station where a geezer was waiting to turn his train around. Alright, you hurry up and get my passenger car turned around. I have to get turned around too in service. You're not gonna rush me, said the diesel, and, after, and was determined to move as slow as possible. Soon Milton was back on his way, speeding along the line. Get out of the way, he shouted. Who does that engine think he is, said Malcolm. I don't know, but if he keeps that up, he'll get into trouble. I'm very sorry to say that Chrissy was right. Calm down, boy, said his driver. The station isn't going anywhere, but I want to get there on time, said Milton. He was so busy showing off that he missed the red signal. As they got near Springfield, Milton looked ahead and saw that the switch was set for the Springfield Industrial Branch. Oh no, driver, stop, stop! But Milton was going too fast and went off the main line onto the Springfield Industrial Track. Help! He cried, I, I can't stop! Ian and Danny watched in horror as Milton, speeding at a whopping rate, went up the branch line. Thankfully, Milton Drive was able to slow him down, but not before reaching the spot where Kevin was working. Well, 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 say Kevin, what are you doing up here? Milton didn't say a word. Well, you're not meant to be here. Come on, let me help you back to the main line. So, Kevin coupled on the Milton's observation car and pulled him back to the main line. Danny and Ian snickered as they saw Kevin pulling a very embarrassed Milton off the Springfield Industrial Branch. Once they reached the main line and it was deemed safe, Milton puffed away, much careful this time. When he arrived at South Plainsville, he saw a very angry Ray and Mr. Reed. What were you thinking, said Ray, running a red signal like that? Milton gulped. Uh, 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 I, 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 you weren't thinking, said Mr. Regan. That's the problem. And we've heard you've been showing off the other engines all day, acting a fool. And, said Ray, until you learn to behave and not be so conceited, you will not be pulling this train. You will pull freight trains. <laughs> Freight trains? said Milton. He could not believe what he had heard. Yes, said Mr. Regan. Freight trains. And you can take your own coaches away, finished Mr. Regan, since you don't want Steve to do it. Milton didn't say another word. He just sighed.
Yoku the Streamline Atlantic was feeling very sorry for himself. On his first run with the New Express, he ran through a red signal and onto the Springfield Industrial Branch. He was punished by Ray and had to pull freight trains all day. But even though Milton was on punishment, work still had to be done. So Larry, Chrissy, and Kevin took it in turn to take the Express for him. One day, Ray was having trouble making the schedule. Huh, he said. I need Chrissy to take an important train to the seaport. Kevin has to haul a commuter train. And I need Larry to collect an important ballast train from Denville. That means I have no one to take the express. Well, said Paul, why don't we just have Andrew do it? You didn't schedule him for anything. You know what, said Ray? As much as I don't want to, I guess we could have Andrew take the express. When Andrew found out, he was delighted. I can't believe Ray is giving me the express. He must realize what a great engine I am. The other engines rolled their eyes. They heard Andrew talk this way before. Don't get too full of yourself, Andrew, Danny said. She's right, said Bernard. You don't want to get too big-headed. Larry was a little kinder. Just make sure you get your passengers to their destinations on time. Oh, with me, said Andrew, that'll be no trouble. The next morning, Andrew excitedly went to collect the express. As soon as the passengers boarded, he departed. Andrew made his way along the line. He was feeling very pleased with himself. He boasted to the others as he passed. They didn't say anything, but he was beginning to sound a little like Milton. He arrived at Otisville, where Tabitha, one of the electric engines, was waiting. You better be careful, Andrew, said Tabitha. There's gonna be a storm coming. I'll be all right, said Andrew. A little rain never hurt anybody. By the time Andrew got refueled and the train turned around, the weather took a bad turn for the worse. I'll be all right. I'll be all right, said Andrew. But he wasn't. Part of the main line ran by a stream, and the water had risen and it damaged part of the track. Andrew and his crew couldn't see too well because a heavy mist had flew in the air. Just then, Andrew hit a bump in the tracks. What was that? He exclaimed. This caused the passenger cars to break loose and derail right into the stream. Help! shouted the passengers. Andrew's crew quickly ran back to see if any of the passengers were hurt. Thankfully, none of them were, but they were a bit shaken. When the rain stopped, a diesel from the other railway arrived with some passenger cars to take the passengers away. As soon as he departed, Larry arrived with the crane. Paul was on board. Don't feel bad, Andrew, said Paul. The accident wasn't your fault. I bet you Ray still thinks it was, said Andrew sadly. No, he doesn't, said Paul. I called him and he's not blaming you for what happened. Now you go back to South Plainsville and rest. Larry will take the passenger cars away after they're back on the rails. Larry's right, said Paul. You go and rest. You had a long day. And without another word, Andrew did. The other rangers planned on teasing Andrew when he got back to the sheds. But when they saw how sad he was, they couldn't find it in their hearts to do it, and instead spoke sympathetically to him and told him that things would be better next time. The passenger cars weren't too badly damaged, and the train had to be canceled for one day. And the day after that, Andrew pulled the express again, this time with no incident. But I suppose you're still wondering about Milton. That that store's gonna have to wait for another day.